answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be you. The world awaits to receive you. And for you to define them as it pertains to your life. Uh, fear. It's something that, that don't matter. It's all in your mind. You're not hit till you hit. You know, that's what make a soldier keep, keep going when the bullets is flying. You're not hit till you hit. Um, so don't act hit till you get hit. And keep pushing and don't be scared. Because you might not get hit. You might get through there without even a scratch. Hmm. So um, put your faith in God and uh, the fear is all in your mind. Courage. Courage is, um, is something that we all should make sure we can call on. You know, you build up your courage before you have to do it. You know, you don't. You don't build up your courage at the moment of truth. You build up your courage before the moment of truth. So when it comes, you already know what you're going to do. Right. You know, you already know what you're going to do. How important is character? Character is everything. Um, nothing is great um, unless the, the person created has great character. Um, if you don't have great character, um, I think whatever you create uh, will ultimately uh, not be good for for people in the long run. You know, um, character is what we all it's what we all have. It's our spirit. You know what I mean? It's like you can't you can't take that away. Um, if, if, if you don't let nobody take it away, that's one of those things that God give you that you can give it away, you know what I'm saying? But nobody can take it away. So it's something you should cherish like you cherish your soul, you know, you cherish your spirit. And lastly, longevity. That's what we all want. You know, um, God's law is whatever is is uh born has an expiration date mm. uh whatever comes alive has an expiration date so we all have an expiration date but you want to be as good for as long as you can um until you can't do it no more you know what i mean the reason why i ask that is because over the years of me knowing you and being a fan of your career, man, you, you've been in a lot of positions where you couldn't be afraid. You had to have courage to walk away from a bunch of things that the average person wouldn't walk away from. You know what I mean? You've always had excellent character. You, 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 you're a superstar, man, but you're going to show up here on time. You showed up here on time and early. What that's what you, you do. Yeah, that's, but that's character. You know what I mean? And then all that to me is why you've had so much longevity. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? if you can't be on time, be early. Right. If you can't be on time, be early. God, but you make the decision mm -hmm. at the time. You know, you you make the decision like, yeah, he's gotten me out of some dumb decisions and I've been able to sidestep other things. You know, I, I ain't always had the courage all the time to do the right things or basically make an impact at the moment of truth. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody else, I've had the moments in my life when I said, man, I should have did this or I should have did that. Or, you know, next time I'm not gonna let that happen. And I've learned from the moments and I've just decided that it's better to, you know, to stand up for yourself at the time than to, 
go to bed regretting you not doing what you should have did, what you knew you should have did at the time that that you should have did it. So I've always been aware and always wanted to make sure people knew where I stand, been assertive. Assertive, is that what you call yeah. it, assertive? Assertive, you know, <laughs> and um, I made a promise to myself that I would do everything to make sure I didn't end up in the penitentiary. Mm. You know, it was like, I was just working to make sure they didn't get me. I was talking to you. Probably California State Penitentiary. My friend Greenfield, he had just bought a shotgun. He bought a shotgun from Western Surplus. So he had, we just turned 18. And um, I, I heard about, you know, I, I go home. This is days after he had got it. Go home and uh, my mother tell me what happened that a classmate had came by and I knew he was smoking, you know, I knew he was, you know, not the same person I went to school with, you know, he had just kind of turned into a, a fiend. So I knew he lied, tricked her. I wasn't even close to this dude. I just knew him. So I knew where he lived. I went down and, um, we we jumped in his car, had the shotgun, went to went to dude house, knocked on the door, and he wasn't home. So thank God he wasn't home, cause I was mad. I wasn't thinking. I didn't really like the dude at all anyway. So I I felt violated, cause he did that to my mother. Mm -hmm. So I was extra on one and um he wasn't home so we, we we left and it just gave me time to cool down and my mother was like it's only twenty dollars you know what i mean i would have gave him twenty dollars you know if he, even uh if he didn't come with that story if he asked so you know it's the moments that i thank god that uh you know obviously he's watching my back you know that was you know, moment in time. You know, I think my bi my biggest pivot was I used to play football too. Play what position? Fullback and linebacker, outside oh. linebacker. Mm -hmm. And I stopped playing that to hang out with Dr. Dre. You know, uh, I, I quit the team. Well, it wasn't fun no more uh. because I wasn't trying to, I wasn't thinking about I'm playing football to go to, college right. mm -hmm. to play in the pros. I was playing football because it was fun. I like to play football. The coaches was just way too serious. You know what I mean? They was just way too serious for me. They were so worried about their job. It wasn't fun. So I was on the fence. And then I got into the music. I met Dr. Dre. We just hit it off, you know, always running creative ideas by each other. And, and we was both serious about hip hop. And so I chose to quit the team in 11th grade and, and go hang with him. And that's my biggest pivot. Um, you know, I wanted to play sports, you know, football, basketball. I figured that. And um, I got into this music thing. I became a fan. And then I tried it one day, tried to rap. Um, I got better. I, I used to seek out people in the neighborhood that was doing hip hop. Um, I met Dr. Dre in, in you know, 10th grade. And um, by the time I got to the 11th grade, I had a decision to make, you know, keep playing football or, um, or get into this music thing and hang out and be available. So when Dre, you know, Dre, he he would be on his way out when I'm coming home from school. If I came home at the regular time, I could catch him, make it to Compton with him. And we know where they doing the music at, up at Lonzo House, you know, Grandmaster Lonz. And um, I would do everything I could to make it on time. And if I came around the corner and saw that car, I knew I, knew I was in the game. You know, I was like, wow. drop the books. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be at the studio all night. And um, I used to figure out how I'm going to do my homework, when I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this on the bus. I'm going to do this. In first period, I'm going to do third period stuff. You know, I used to be like figuring all everything out so I can stay at the studio late. Because if I went with him, he wasn't going to bring me home till he was finished. So, right. You know, I could, right. be at, I could be there at two till two in the morning. And I got to get the bus at 645. Come on, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I I was down for that. Growing up, what did Ice Cube see when he stepped outside in its neighborhood? Um, I mean, it's a nice neighborhood. You know, it's a lot of boys on our street. You know, back then it was a lot of boys on the block. So it was always something going on. You know, whether it was football, basketball, baseball in the street, um, go-karts, mini bikes. All that. Uh, skateboards. We putting up ramps. We jumping off the roof. We having on. water balloon fights. Come on. You know what I'm saying? We playing high and go see. You know what I mean? We, uh, you know, just enjoying the whole neighborhood and and um and you know and looking out for yourself you know you're looking out for you know gang bang activity mm -hmm. looking out for the wrong car to hit the corner yes sir mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you're mm -hmm. looking out for um lennox yeah you know what i mean which was the sheriff there was this, the sheriffs that patrolled the neighborhood so you're looking out for them, too, because you ain't got to be doing nothing for them to fuck with you. Uh, so just being innocent, sitting down and kicking it with your friends on the bike or sitting on the grass, whatever, they, they roll up, pull up, and, you know, um, depends on who they really want to talk to out there. So it, it was all that. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people going to work, a lot of kids going to school. Um, people coming home from work, people coming home from school. Um, you know, sometimes it'd be, you know, fight here or there on the block. Uh, you know, somebody picking on somebody, somebody uh, trying to talk to somebody's sister, you know, a few oh. girls out there. But, you know, you could always get something cracking, whatever you wanted to get going. It's right there. You could always get find it, a few people to do it. Um, <clears throat> we had some interesting conversations on the tour bus. So I, I thought some of that should be shared. So I wanted to ask you, uh, I wanted to start this off by asking you four questions. No, just give me four words and for you to define them as it pertains to your life. Uh, fear. It's something that, that don't matter. It's all in your mind. You're not hit till you hit, you know, that's what make a soldier keep, keep going when the bullets is flying. You're not hit till you hit. Um, so don't act hit till you get hit and keep pushing and don't be scared because you might not get hit. You might get through there without even a scratch. Hmm. So um, put your faith in God and uh, the fear is all in your mind. Courage. Courage is um, is something that we all should make sure we can call on. You know, you build up your courage before you have to do it. You know, you don't you don't build up your courage at the moment of truth. You build up your courage before the moment of truth. So when it come, you already know what you're gonna do. Right. You know, you already know what you're gonna do. How important is character? Character is everything. Um, nothing is great um, unless the the person created has great character. Um, if you don't have great character, um, I think whatever you create uh, will ultimately uh, not be good for for people in the long run, you know. Um, character is what we all, 
it's what we all have. It's our spirit. You know what I mean? It's like you can't you can't take that away. Um, if 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 you don't let nobody take it away, that's one of those things that God give you that you can give it away. You know what I'm saying? But nobody can take it away. So it's something you should cherish, like you cherish your soul. You know, you cherish your spirit. And lastly, longevity. That's what we all want. You know, um, God's law is whatever is is uh, born has an expiration date. Mm. Uh, whatever comes alive has an expiration date. So we all have an expiration date. But you want to be as good for as long as you can um, until you can't do it no more. Um, you know, I recognize that it was art. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's art. And when you're an artist, you can paint anything you want to paint. You don't have to stick to a script and you don't have to be what what they say you are or what people perceive you as. You know, you can be who you want to be and do it how you want to do it. And just because I remember, you know, dudes in the studio told me not to do it was a good day. Really? Yeah. They was like, Q, you do hardcore music, man. You, you know, you do that. You do that real shit. You know what I'm saying? This nigga, good day. What you mean? What you talking about, man? You supposed to be talking about the shit. And I'm like, <laughs> I said, no, nah, homie, it, it ain't like that. You know, I ain't just popping off. You know what I'm saying? If if I'm having a good day and I'm a reality rapper, yeah, God damn it, I should be able to right. say that I'm having a good day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to be, no, nah, I only do it this way. I only talk about this. I only can say this because... This is how I started, you know. I started hardcore and everything got to be hardcore. And it's like, that's not even reality. You know, the reality is you can't judge a book by its cover. And uh, I've proved that, I've proven that over and over and over again. You just can't judge a book by its cover. So, so don't try. And that's what it's really all about. It's like, you see me, people see me, they have different perceptions, but you don't know, you don't really know what's going on with yeah. me. You don't know what I know and what I don't know and what I can do and what I can't do. And so, you know, I've just hopefully been an example really? uh, of of that one fact. Yeah. And talking about that, bro, did success breed success? Like without rap, would there be movies? Without rap, would it be producing? Without like. Did you did you need that side to see that I'm talented? Like you said, I am an artist with the rap, and now I can move on. You know, the better you do in one opportunity, the more doors open for you. Yeah. If you squander your first opportunity, sometimes the second and the third ones don't even um, present themselves. So it's really about recognizing opportunities, um, taking advantage of them, because that's what they're there for. You know, doors don't stay open. So when they open, you got to go through it, not doubting yourself because an opportunity may present itself in something you ain't never did before. Being willing to learn on the job training mm -hmm. <laughs> and know that you just can't learn, but you got to be great at it at the same time as you learn it. So being committed, you know, and, and yeah, I think, you know, if you're successful, and one thing, other opportunities present themselves. I know the gentleman that invented hot Cheetos. And his story is, he was a janitor at the company and his father told him, wherever the area, they should know that, that a Jackson did this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the bosses recognize, hey, yay, hey, man, who who the one cleaning up the area around here? They want to talk to him. I said, man, you take initiative. You know, I like how you do your job, man. Any ideas you got for the company, let us know. <clears throat> he let them know. 
now he a billionaire and and um it's all because he did it he did the, his his one opportunity to work for the company he did his job like he cared and he got an opportunity and he took advantage of it and i do it for them and they're a dwindling mob by the way <laughs> wow and you because know people it are like so partisan i mean the world needs that the world needs straight shooters yes who are not worried about just being safe and you know we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings or we don't want to offend nobody or you know it's, it's it gets kind of but also not in a bubble already you know what was you know what was cool about my career is i didn't and i wasn't hot from the jump you know i sat back and watched dr dre um grandmaster lines uh yellow clientele i watched the wrecking crew Mm. I watched their trials and tribulations and stuff, so I knew somewhat how how hard it is to struggle in the game. So I had kind of went through it. You know, we, I was in a group called Stereo Crew, and um, we we were signed to Epic Records, so we went through that process of... And, you know, what was cool about Lonzo, he, we did it right. You know what I'm saying? He, um, he didn't take advantage of us... We was young, you know, we were right. so young. Our parents had to sign for us, and wow. so we was still like 15, That's 16. Dope. I kind of knew what was up, uh, but who really put me on it was uh, Pat Charbonnet. If y'all look at Friday, it, it'll say produced by Pat Charbonnet. Hmm. Uh, she was my first manager, and she really, you know, taught me a lot about the game and things to look out for. You know, I wish we could have highlighted her in the movie, uh, but it was just a lot of politics behind, you know, who went in the movie and who didn't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, she was just, you know, telling me to look out, be right. careful. Um, she connected me with a lawyer, a guy by the name of Michael Ashburn. She was helping, helping me navigate behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate that she was there. But you're talking about navigating behind the scenes and, and contracts. And it makes me think about some of the backlash you got for negotiating or even talking about negotiating, negotiating a contract with Black America. Yeah. Right? You went yeah. from being the guy that was NWA and F the police to your own people, your own community, who you supported through movies, through music, and all of this, calling you a sellout, where you had to step out and say, look, this is what I was doing. This is why it mattered to me. You really had to be in the frame of mind of saying, you know what, I don't care how this looks. I have a mission, I have a passion to help people, and I don't care if it's with the people. I'm going to talk to the party, I'm going to talk to the folks who want to help me move things forward. How did you get that passion that you wanted to give back to the community, what you felt they deserved and what they were owed? But also, how did you get to a point where you didn't care what table you sat at? Because you dealt with a ton of a ton of backlash for doing that and talking to the former president. If you know uh, that you can make a difference, other people might not understand it, but you know, I feel obligated to try. And I felt like people understand it in time. You know what I'm saying? Due time, people understand. You know, so I, I, I'm used to being able to take the, the bullets as they come in the moment, understanding that, you know, uh, as time go on, people will understand the move. Now, you know, with that situation, with any situation, what I want people to understand is you hear about the institutions, you know, you got Democrats, you got the Republicans, you got, you know, Congress, Senate, Judges, doctors, lawyers, blah, 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 police, huh, firemen. They're all just people, man. Right. All these titles and shit don't mean nothing. I don't care about nobody's title. That's something people usually get a self. People cherish their little title. You know, fuck your title. I don't care. You're a person. I'm going to talk to you. you. You know, and... I don't get hung up on what you 
think you are. You know what I'm saying? I get hung up on, can I communicate with you? If you're going in the right direction, I'm gonna cheer you on. If you're going in the wrong direction, I'm gonna try to turn you around. And that's what it's all about, man. We so hung up on people's titles and we don't understand it's just people. You know, we put too much, you know, people scared to talk to their doctor. Why? He's it's a fucking doctor. Like, he's not even, I mean, he's a doctor, but he's a man or a woman with the answers or not. Ask the questions, you know what I mean? Don't get hung up on on all these all this stuff. So I learned that, you know, as I matured, that not to get up, caught up on nobody's title. And I'm going to talk to somebody like a man or a woman. That's my approach. Um, the contract with Black America, everybody, you know, after the George Floyd murder, um, all of America pretended like they wanted to do something different and make amends for, you know, really cutting us out of the financial flow and system of things. And um, so... But they were, everybody was really focused on police brutality. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a broader conversation and talk about everything that is plaguing um, us in America. And so that's where the contract with Black America came from. Now, I put it out, you know, July 1st. Everybody wanted to talk to me. You know, I didn't call the Democrats and say, did you see what I dropped? Check for me. I didn't call the Republicans. It's like, did you see that contract with Black America? It wasn't really for that. It was for everybody to look at it, dissect it, add to it, subtract from it, debate it, understand it. Mm -hmm. And wherever they can use it, they could to better a bill or get grant money or whatever that you needed this for, you needed this information for, you could use it like you could use a, a dictionary, you know? So, well, look, I'm in the entertainment business, so I know people that's doing good, but I know people that's that's struggling. Of course. You know, people that go to the grocery store and, and see, you know, $35 eggs and yeah. shit and like, oh. what the hell's going on? Um, you know, so... I, I I think, you know, the the country but what's the solution? needs an enema, but you know, real bad. You know, it's a lot of full of shit stuff oh, so much shit. that needs to just be um, drained out of there. But a lot bunch of, it, you know, people at the top, like yeah. you said, a bunch of people. You know, a lot of lawyers. I think the I think this this country is is over litigated. It's too yes. many lawyers, too many case, too many yeah. frivolous lawsuits, too many, yes. too many coward judges who won't throw that shit out. They, well, you know, we haven't set a precedent, or or I don't want to be the one <laughs> to kick that out. Let let the appeals court do it, and it's like you're supposed to be here for common sense, and you know you're just basically a clerk. So it, it's just, um, I mean, that's true. It, it's a, it's a you know, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, I love Vegas, you know, but no matter how many lights they put up, it's still about gambling and, you know, walking out of there, poor than you <laughs> walked in is the game. You know what I mean? No matter how you, how, no matter how, how yep. pretty you make it, right. it's all about, you know, they want you to leave you know, separated play. From, from your money. You can play yeah. and have fun and play the little game, but basically they want they want your money. They don't want you to win. If you win too much, they'll escort you out. It's, it's weird how the name's always changing every something like 20 or 30 years. Somebody wants to put a new label on the same thing. You mean ethnic names? Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. It seems like, you know, you go from this to that to that and the other. Right. You know, at the end of the day. And People of color used to be, you know, reversed 50, yeah. 50 years ago. 
yeah, and um, it's just done to really keep us bickering and, you know, chasing these words. Okay, um, so and it, not really getting to the root of, of of the issues, which are most of the time very common, if we really go down to the root of it. Could not agree more. Yeah, but you said it's being done to divide us. Okay, by who? Who's doing it? Well, who benefits and profits off our bickering and our division? You know, who? It's like follow the money. Man, I don't know their names, Bill, but if you follow the money, you go high enough, you start to see, okay, um, you know, this is an industry. Okay, let's take, let's take rap music. Let's take okay. it. Same people who own the labels own the prisons. So. Literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. So, so, you know, it, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that, you know, the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making, it's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about um, being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't certain flavors are exposed on the record. You know, some records are made by committee, you, meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. So the, the narrative is really kind of, you know, structured and, 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 and and really made into what the record company want the record to be. And what the, you know, a lot of artists are frustrated with this kind of music making. You know, a lot of people, you know, feel like they're being controlled by the label. This is how they do it. Telling you what songs to sing, what hooks to do, what songs, you know, you can do your song, that's fine. That's an album cut. But you wanna, the single is what we all say is the single. So you have, you know, the record company pushing the narrative, you know, um, and, but, uh, and, 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 you know, so this, this to me is in somewhat, uh, uh, you know, some social engineering going on here to, to make sure those prisons stay full. Now, there's a lot of, of course, a lot of dots to connect to make that happen. But I'm just giving you a broad example of how people at the top can manipulate what's going on with the people who are okay. bickering and fighting. I just gave you a music example, but there's examples but of, of, can I of cross race. Can I cross-examine? <laughs> go to, you know, go um, to space. <laughs> or you gotta, you gotta stay creative, you know, being creative is why I got into the business. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna make a quarter <laughs> doing rap music. You know, we was just doing it for fun. You know, to to be cool, to 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 you know be clever, and and to be a part of a new wave of, of music that everybody, you know, how, older than us was really shunning. How do you feel about the police now? Um. Things have changed. Like I've always felt about them, you know. They. So you don't think they've changed at all? Um, in what ways, you know? Uh, I think they. Well, they never used to ar arrest their own and put them on trial and put them in jail. That's yeah, one major I, I, thing. Yes, I also think, generation. I think the people push that change. You know, I don't think. Yeah, but. I well, don't think the police. Police are people. Internally. Police um, are people. I understand that, but police are. Uh, Bad organization, <laughs> you know, they're a fraternity. Yes. And they, um, 
You know, they had their rules of engagement. Yeah. Some, you know, are in the police manual. Some are not. You know what I mean? So yes. well, they're, they're not really... The bad good. ones are the ones that are in. <laughs> For one, the, the, the NBA, um, I, you know, I really don't understand their position. Um, they're considering us competition. Um, and if you look at the big three compared to the NBA, yeah, yeah. it's not competition. Right. What they're not understanding is we do a lot with our game for for the mental health of of athletes who've honed their skills from little kids to grown men to maturity. Some of them, you know, we start as young as twenty two, but but guys still being able to play the game that they love and make money. That's what it's all about. You know, it's not about Ice Cube and, and you know, they can hurt me. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it's going to hurt my feelings if, if the big three don't <laughs> survive. Right. But it's going to crush a lot of athletes. It's going to take a lot of jobs away. They don't have a head coaching job for the Ice Man. They don't have a head coaching job for Rick Barry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't. Or or Rick Mahorn or or Michael Cooper or Nancy Lieberman or Lisa Leslie. So to crush this league and to do the things that they're doing behind the scenes is going to hurt Adam Silver's legacy. This is going to be the stain. Um, mark my words. It's not going to matter if he put Black Lives Matter on the court. If, if if black lives don't matter in his heart, mm. so it, it, this is gonna be what what to do it if he don't turn this around. It'll be a shame because it's so easy for him to say that we're not a competing league and let his owners invest into the big three and make sure you know there's a place. You know, every team could have a NBA team could have a three on three team. You know, it's right. like. Well, why? Are, what are we doing here? Uh, it's a great idea. We took it to him first, so it's not like we just showed up on the block. We took it to him first. We came bearing gifts, <laughs> offered him 10% of the league for free. He had to pay a quarter. And he said, thank you, but no thank you. And we proceeded to do our thing, but, you know, encouraging networks not to run the big three, it's not cool. You know, you virtually hear nothing about the big three on mainstream sports media. Why? You know, it's like, what's cooler than the big three right now to going on in the summer? Mm -hmm. It's not the summer league NBA. Right. You don't even know half them kids. Right. Some of them dudes ain't even going to make the team. Right. It's, you know, unless you love golf or mid-season baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, what else is cooler what else benefits um, their former players more than the big three? So something's got to give. So the, the idea and the concept from paper pen to fruition, like, what were you, what were you doing? Like, <laughs> how in the fuck hey, you say, hey, I'm finna start a big three? You got to be uh, smoking, three, watch three. the people. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Like, she hey. wasn't smoking nothing. <laughs> like I mean, that, uh, smoking chicken a coop, bit, right? That chicken coop? Yeah, nah, I wasn't in the chicken coop. <laughs> It, it's it's a you know it's it's been there it's it's been the three on three been the little cousin of five on five from day one. It's something we all usually play. We How probably don't play. On it? We started in 2017. Right. We spent 2016 discussing rules and 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 business model. And Fireball. 2015. We were hmm man. You know, could we, I don't know, you know, Kobe scored 60 points in his last game. I'm not there. Mm. I'm I'm shooting a movie, I think it might have been either Fist Fight or Barbershop. They may, might have been Fist Fight. So I'm not there. I'm pissed. I missed Kobe last game and he scored 60. My son... O'Shea Jr., my wife, kids going crazy. You should have been there. You missed it. Ah. So I'm like, man, I cannot see this dude play no more. Right. 
this 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 ain't right. I I'll pay money. Mm. There's nowhere I could pay to see this guy play. And then that's when uh, I called my guy Jeff, and uh, I said, "We gotta do this shit, man." And it was like, "Let's let's let's figure it out." And then that's when 2016 we started to churn. 2017 we had Ice Man down to do it. We had uh, Kenyon Martin, mm -hmm. Jermaine O'Neal down to do it. Chauncey Billups, Dr. J to agree. And once we got Allen Iverson, we was like, man, we gonna announce because yeah. people gonna want to see this. Right, right. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your. Uh... Tell me about your basketball league, Ice Cube. I, mm -hmm. I hear it's exciting and the new thing in basketball. Without a doubt, you know it's the big three, uh, professional three on three. Yep. You know it's oh, kind of like three on three has been the, the step cousin of five on five forever. It's, it's what when I heard about your league, I said, "This is how I play. This is what I do. Yes. Half court, three yes. on three, all the rules." So we just did that and just made, you know, kind of elevated to the professional level, added some wrinkles that the NBA can't do, you know, like a four point, we got four point circles out there. So if you shoot 30 feet from the basket, man, you, you deserve an extra point. And so, uh, answer, because you are that, you are capable, you are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be you. The world awaits to receive you. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.